Hello everybody and welcome back to another Edexcel IGCSE Biology Guide on the RevWise channel. Today I'm going to be doing one of the most important practical subunits in the Biological Molecules unit and probably the most important practical subunit in the whole IGCSE Biology course. This is so important because it's actually not that common that practical questions appear on your um, prescribed practicals on the syllabus but for this specific unit it actually appears very often. And this unit I'm talking about is, as you can tell from the title, food tests. Food tests, food tests appear very often, and it's really important that you know all the food tests for your course. So let's go right into it. What are food tests? So food tests are a common inclusion in many biology papers. The four tests that you need to know are for the four biological molecules that you really dive into, which is lipids, proteins, glucose, and starch. You really do need to remember the method for all of these, as any of them can come up during your paper. All right, now before we go right into the actual food test, we need to do one of the most important things about food tests that people often forget, which is preparing the actual food sample. See, solid foods that are in their whole form cannot be tested on, as you won't observe any color change when using the chemicals on them. Hence, a food sample must be prepared. Now, the good thing for you guys is the preparation for the food sample is a universal method, and you don't even have to go as in-depth as I show in this slide, but it's important that you just know how to do it. So the steps are to break up the food using a mortar and pestle, for example, then transfer the food to a test tube and add distilled water, then mix the food with the, uh, with the water using a glass stirring rod, and then filter the mixture using funnel and filter paper, collecting the solution. And now you can proceed with any of your food tests um, that I'm going to explain in a second. Now, one thing to note is you do not have to go in this much depth, but I think it's important that you guys just get an understanding of how to prepare the food sample. And remember, you cannot do a food test on a whole solid food. It doesn't work. So you need to prepare the food sample before. Okay, right into our first test, which is starch. Now, one thing to note is that for all of the biological molecule food tests, they have a key substance involved that will help you determine if the biological molecule is present. For starch, you have to remember it's iodine solution. This will get you the mark for the question with starch. So first thing you have to do is add the food sample to a test tube and then add a few drops of iodine solution to the test tube. Now the thing for the second mark to remember is that the positive change, which essentially means the change that if starch is present, you will see a change from orange slash brown to blue slash black. Now one thing to note is the color uh, is quite uh, varying for iodine. Uh, there's a couple different interpretations of it. These are colors that will get you marks in the mark scheme. And as I'll see in the image on the next slide, this is an image that shows the color change and it says brown slash yellow, blue slash purple. These will also get you marked most of the time. But I will tell you, from my personal experience, it's always good to stick with um, orange, brown, blue, black. That's a good standard to hold to. And just remember the color change is from negative to positive. Next up, we have the test for glucose. And this time, the key substance is Benedict solution. Now, this is not as simple as the starch one, as we actually have an extra step. So first thing, we have to add the Benedict solution to the sample in a test tube. Then, we need to heat the test tube in a boiling water bath for 5 minutes. Then, we take the test tube out of the water bath and observe the color. A positive test for glucose, once again, this means that if glucose is present, you will see a color change from blue to orange slash brick red. And um, when I say uh, you have to heat the test tube in a boiling water bath for 5 minutes, that 5 minutes won't... Um, Mentioning five minutes isn't necessary for marks in almost all mark schemes, but you do have to mention you have to heat it to observe the color change. So you have to heat it beforehand. Just remember that. Now here is the um, color change you can see. After heating in a water bath, you will see a brick red precipitate is the technical way to say it. And yeah, that's the color change for Benedict solution. One thing to note as well. In a couple questions, you will see this image. You might see this image in a diagram or they might ask you about it. The thing about Benedict solution is it varies in color depending on the concentration of sugar. So as you can see, no sugar, uh, like I said before, it is in a blue color. And slowly, trace sugar is green precipitate, then low sugar, yellow precipitate, moderate, orange, and then high, brick red. Now you can um, remember this just by remembering uh, how dark the color becomes. You can think of that brick red is uh, like a harsher, darker color than orange and yellow is lighter than orange, and it slowly increases depending on glucose concentration. And I've seen a couple questions in GCSE where they ask you about glucose concentration with these colors. So just remember, Benedict solution varies depending, the color change that you observe varies depending on the concentration of sugar. But 
In general, the concentration of the presence of glucose will give you a brick red precipitate to finish. All right, now we have another easy one, which is the test for protein. The key substance involved is burette solution. So all you have to do is add a few drops of burette to the food sample, and then the positive test, if protein is present, will show a color change from blue to violet slash purple. And this is a very easy, distinct one. And you can see in this image here, it goes from a distinct blue to a distinct violet slash purple. Simple as that. Okay, finally, we have the test for lipids. And this is technically the most difficult one to remember, but it's also quite an easy one to identify. Now, the reason is the key substance doesn't work like how the other key substances work. So technically, the key substance here involved is ethanol, but you don't add it in the same way you do for the others. So the first thing you have to do is mix the food sample with a small volume of ethanol and shake it. You have to wait for the sample to dissolve in the ethanol. Then you strain the ethanol out of the solution into another test tube, and you add the ethanol so solution to an equal volume of cold distilled water. And the positive tests, and this is really important, you have to say a cloudy emulsion forms. This is a really nice technical word that will get you points in the mark scheme, saying cloudy emulsion. And I'll show you on the next slide. This is exactly what a cloudy emulsion looks like. A cloudy emulsion is like a foggy, uh, milky texture inside of the ethanol. And you can see here, that's what a cloudy emulsion looks like. This one might be a bit harder to remember than the others, but as long as you remember cloudy emulsion and remember that you need to use ethanol, uh, you'll be fine. All right, now that's all the food tests, just like that, really fast. But it would be unfair if I left you guys without giving you a practice question. So I couldn't find too many, but I found this one that I think is pretty good. So it says, bread contains starch. Describe how you would test a piece of bread to show that it contains starch for two marks. Now, instantly, we got to be thinking, what is the molecule or what is the substance that we use for starch? Well, if you think back to what we said earlier in the video, it's iodine. It's iodine. And remember, starch is one of the easy ones. You just add iodine and we see the color change. So let's look at what I wrote for the response. Here's an ideal response for the two marks. Add iodine to the bread, and if starch is present, a blue-black color would be observed. Notice how I didn't have to say the initial color, because it's asking how would I know if, color, if starch was present. Well, you'd know if it, pre if it was present if you saw the blue-black color. Now, you may be wondering, this bread was never made into a food sample, so how are we doing this? Well, the thing is, this question's only two marks, and in these two-mark questions, they don't often ask for the food sample technique. Now this may be a bit confusing for you, but if you just want to do it either way, I added the extra step in brackets at the bottom. First break up the mortar using a mortar and pestle, add distilled water, and then stir until mixed. That will just give you the reassurance that you've covered all the boundaries, but I'm telling you for two marks, it's very rare you'll need to state that you need to make it into a food sample. And yeah, that's how you get perfect response for this question. And uh, finally, here's the recap for the video. It shows all of the food tests with the color of the reagent, the positive test result and the negative test result with no change. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it was a quick one, but it's really important that you remember all of this. And if you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I will answer to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. See you guys next time.